Bar none, Canadian's career stands out as one of the most storied in NACH history. In Brazil, cameraman's easily one of the most recognizable players to ever grace the server. Today, they butt heads for the sixth time ever in their storied tenures, and now we get to bear witness. I'm Jacob, he's Laxy, he is Jesse, and this is M80 and Dark Zero. For those two players in particular, they've been duking it out against each other in servers since 2017, and now we finally get to see it domestically in the NAL. Yeah, and I mean, it's a great comparison because you've got Cameraman, one of the oldest players, I believe the oldest player of the big three regions right now, now inside of Rainbow Six Siege. And then you have Canadian, one of the best rookies that I've ever seen play. So, I mean, <laughs> he's the best 19 year old I've ever seen. Who really have been, uh, you know, around the seat for a while, obviously Canadian too. And uh, it's gonna be good to see them going head to head. No, it's, it's two giant stories, two really big names in the Siege history, two very big pillars. I mean, these are two teams that have tons of history. DZ having a little more, they've obviously been around for a long time. M80 making face here throughout these years, throughout these past couple of years. I mean, this is gonna be a game where we're gonna see these two new rosters really duke it out and see what that ends up being because we all know the last m80 roster just wasn't it i was gonna say the storyline is might be for some people canadian versus cameraman but in another sense it's one team that didn't make any changes after their si result versus another that completely blew up the whole team and decided to start from scratch and for dark zero they're the team that didn't make any adjustments and yet they're the ones near the bottom of the scoreboards currently coming in in the seventh place in the nal coming into this play day so there are very clearly some things you need to work on still yeah I mean, dark zero are massively underperforming uh you talked about how these are two heavy hitters coming into the league and i think it should be but the way DZ have been playing they frankly aren't right now and I really don't like the way that Dark Zero have uh, kind of fallen off you can see NJR stats 76 overall EPS I, I don't think it's all on That's him I'm not most. gonna pay him but like it's still it's still it's ridiculous for NJR yeah this guy's been Mr. Consistent for the last like four years and now I believe he's sitting at minus 11 overall on his KD his worst KD ever through a stage in the North American League was minus two, and now he comes out and he's really, uh, really underperforming. So I think Fox put a spell on him because every time Fox was like talking about like <laughs> really top players for each team, like they just very, they just didn't perform that well. So, yeah. so if, if Fox, if Fox hadn't said anything, then we wouldn't have been in this hole. Got it. We'll just blame Fox because we know he's co-streaming right now. This is Dark Zero's record from when they played earlier to their opening record right now. Their opening stage in 2023, stage two, considerably better. Their only loss, funnily enough, was to M80. Now they've struggled to get back up to that previous standard. Again, players are different. Same, same team philosophy, though. DZ loves to, I swear, like, this is just a trend for DZ. They love giving their fans heart attacks. All those <laughs> games are like seven eights, eight yeah. sevens. Like, it's, it's a consistent trend, but I think the biggest focus here is a lot of these teams, when I watch them play DZ, and you can say this about most situations, teams know what they're doing against said team, but, like, this stage specifically, like, I'm really watching teams focus heavy in on how they want to play against DZ and really meet them with aggression and slow down their play style overall. Yeah, I mean, Dark Zero are the slowest team in the league right now. Their average opening gunfight. The slowest. Gun the slowest. Yikes. Their average opening gunfight is happening at a minute 20, which is not like outside the realm of possibility, but it's still ten, ninth out of ninth for the teams that we're seeing. So for Dark Zero, I, I want to see them try to speed things up. I know that's not their play style. They've always been known as a slow team, but I think it's biting them. And as you said, I think teams are really reading into that. But how much of this is a best of one problem? Best of threes when they played in the Invitational was obviously the standard and you didn't have to worry about playing at best of ones. But for round robin territory, how much does your play style change when you know you don't have another map in your back pocket if you lose the first one? I mean, it does. to me, it doesn't really matter personally because you have to win the match no matter what. Whether you play in another match afterwards, I mean, today they have two matches. So I mean, yeah. If they you know don't have that same performance then there's no real excuse to be made but you still have to be performing on that foot no matter what and it is dz i think the biggest thing that holds them back is their slow pace that if they do just shift that slightly and put it in a different direction or maybe play a little more loose you would see a little more success and not these seven eights eight seven games just whatever that is because again dz has always been down to the t in what they do true and they're not perfect right now they're hoping to get back up to yeah. a, a better higher i think standard. they're still a strong team don't like don't let no, me no, no, write of course. this up yeah. They're a weak team by any means. They did they're finally get a win in their third yes. game. So there is an upward trajectory for Dark Zero. For M80, they're also not perfect, but they're at least doing some things a bit better. They won their first two, lost a really close game on uh, uh, on Skyscraper to LG just last Friday, which was a great defensive half. And then suddenly they meet the whirlwind that is hat and then just can't close the game. Yeah, and I don't want to write off LG. I think M80 went into that game not giving the respect that LG deserves sure. because before they were, you know, a lower tier team and maybe these players aren't, you know, big names like them right. such as themselves. So I don't think they gave the full respect and they immediately 
caught a quick 7-5, well, a 5-7, and a quick ace from Hat Specific that really exposed M80's new style. But this is still a team. This is still a brand new team. They're finding their footing. And I think once they can come into, you know, the right places, both specifically Noodle and Citizen needing to perform at a higher level, once they can find that footing, I can definitely see this team on the uphill trend easily. The way that he talked about that LG game made it seem like maybe their approach versus LG wasn't the same as it was for other teams earlier in the stage. Is there a way that they can fix something? Yeah, I mean, we talked about pacing for Dark Zero. I think pacing is a big thing for M80 as well. You look at their last two games from last week, and I believe we've got some clips for you. The, the way that they were able to attack was very, very different. So this is their game that they played second. This was their match against Luminosity, and I just want you to focus on the speed. This is 5x at the moment. Keep an eye on the clock at the very top. And also, don't forget, they have a pick at this point. They killed one player trying to go for a spawn peak. So they're in a 5v4 trying to clear across the top floor. And we're watching Spoit's POV because he's really the guy to get in first often. We're past a minute. You're still working on one castle barricade. You get it open. What do you find after that? There's going to be a shield that they want to clear. They take another 30 seconds to clear the shield. It is taking ages to get going on that round. They will lose it eventually. Compare that to how they played against the Sonics. They moved lightning quick. Again, less than 2.30 on the clock. They're less than 30 seconds in. They've already found an opening pick. They're in the building. They're clearing top floor. That's the difference I've noticed. And I was curious, you know, why is this happening? Why are we seeing some rounds where they go really fast, some games where they go really slow? And I went through and I looked through the footage and I found something I think you may find interesting. I said, what's going on with Spoit? Why is he going so much faster? And boom, right there. Did you catch that? No way. <laughs> and legally, I cannot explain how I got this, but I, I sent it to my person at the lab. I sent it in, and they were able to confirm two things for me. Number one, this is indeed Spoit's cup that we're holding right here. Yes, be careful with that. Number two, that cup, based on the trace amounts of liquidity found, had at least 140, uh, 1,400 milligrams of caffeine. That's enough to kill a rodent in most <laughs> situations. So I don't care what Spoit's drinking. I don't care what is making him play so good, but they need to keep that speed up. And, you know, however it happens, they got to get it. Wait, hold on to clarify. Was that cup from the game against Sonics or the game against LG? This is the Sonics hey, cup. Is okay, so Spoit needs his caffeine to do money. well. That's I a see. Spoit I get cup. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, get my red Spoit this. cup. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, th th that's our uh, scientifically deduced reason for why Spoit can go fast against some teams. And slow is this why you weren't other. here? You, you been, were getting been, that evidence? I've been doing field work. You <laughs> to, be, to be fair, their land center is in Canada. That's probably why he was there. That makes it's all making sense now. <laughs> the reason they didn't want me past the board. <laughs> <laughs> he had uh, uh, important knowledge that had to be retained in Canada still. So, uh, map, uh, we <laughs> go back. <laughs> all right. We go back to Skyscraper, which again, which was the map that LG just beat M80 on, and M80 were the ones that had final say. It was either Clubhouse or Skyscraper opinions. What do we think? I, I would like to say that, again, M80 slept on LG, and which is why they really hit a wall right there. Mm -hmm. They didn't give the respect that was should should have been given to LG, and now you're going against DZ. You know a team that has setups, has that success, has the players behind that. So I think we will see a maybe more faster pace because they will have an understanding of how DZ plays. But then it comes down to, are you going to let one of those DZ players get an ace on you and not work together and cohesively, you know, take a 1v5 proper right? I mean, listen, I, I think M80 and Dark Zero both have problems, especially when you look at that skyscraper game from M80. But I think M80's problems are easier to fix. You speed that up, I think that game goes a lot better for you. For Dark Zero, you've still got players that aren't performing. You're still going slow as a snail on every single map that you've played. I think M80 take this. The question is, does Spoit have an energy drink for this game? Do you have insider information, and does that sway your prediction? I have someone on the compound. I, again, can't go too much into details, but they, they're looking into it. We'll find out. What's your pick? M80. Okay, Black. I'm at 47%. I'm oh going boy. down. Uh oh, he you might not win the championship. I, I'm changing mine. I'm going M80. You're going M80 after all. I'm going M80. Because at this point, if you slip down any further, you won't catch up to Fox. I'm going M80. You're going M80. I don't care. I'm going M80. Do it. All right. I'm doing it. Jump on the train. Doing it. You're going for the popular team and hoping that Spoit has the exact right liquid that he needs in his cup. It's time for game two. Sparker McKay and Nicholas Moritzen to take us all the way to Skyscraper. Thank you very much. And, and I just, I don't want to, I don't want to leak how this came to be here. M80 are boot camping in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I happen Ooh. to currently be at this present moment living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I was born here. And let's say maybe Jesse and I used our Canadian powers to get somebody to infiltrate the M80 compound with all of its security, its barbed wires, its surveillance, everything. Grab that red solo cup and send it all the way to Edmonton 
and then from Edmonton all the way down to Philadelphia. That cup has been on quite the journey, but numbers don't lie. And if that really is that much caffeine, oh. I can see why M80 would have the upper hand, just as you, the people, seem to think that M80 has the upper hand in the predictions, but only by a small bit, 55 to 45%. Nicholas! Yes? What, what are we expecting? I mean, I saw Laxing changing his call there at the very end, so you know what, I, I root for M80. And I think Laxing's feeling the pressure of falling behind on the statistics here. When we come down to the nitty-gritty numbers, I also think that M80 are favored. And I think JC hit the nail on its head. I think M80, they have easier problems to solve than that of Dark Zero. M80 is a speed problem. DC seems to be a bit of a consistency issue across the board. They need a good day. M80 just gotta speed things up just a tiny bit. Arbiter Benz though, they speak for a couple of different things. Monty, of course, is a very comfortable pick for most teams at this level of play. That's gonna be removed. It's a very stable operator here on Skyscraper. Then you got Dokubi, of course, the, for the Rome Clear. Very commonly played, very commonly banned. And then the Power Braiders of both the Fenrir and the Asami. This is pretty much as standard of a Skyscraper matchup that you can see. This is just respect from both sides, understanding the strong operators and saying, we don't wanna see any of it. So now, with this being the scene that is being set, we gotta see what kind of preparation these players and these teams will bring to play around this. We saw Lowe's play Thermot Shotgun Rush. We saw them play Blitz and Monty. We saw them play Glass. Lowe's showed us a lot of fun rounds of Rainbow Six Siege. And I would like to see more fun rounds here between M80 and Dark Zero because Skyscraper, if played very slow, it's not a very fun match to watch. So speed, aggression, confidence, and teamwork all the way. And of course, don't forget the most important part, the power of friendship. Okay. Yeah, overrated. M80 used to be known as the friendship roster. <laughs> How did that go? Did not go well. <laughs> now you come to Skyscraper and now you are the international roster assembled from a variety of different continents, currently playing on a continent that actually none of the players have come from. <laughs> That's crazy. And here we are, DZ, favoring the same two operators, banned every single time. Dokubi and Azami are no longer in action if DZ is in the map. Those are their operator bans for the first three maps. And would you be surprised to see it also for the fourth? M80 banning the Monty, as they have done previously in Fenrir as well. This is very standard stuff. Saw a brief bit of, I think it was drone work downstairs in that bedroom bathroom portion of the map the game oh, yeah. that we just witnessed was played on clubhouse and we talked about bomb site rotation skyscraper was the map that we used as an example of that because the bottom floor bomb site of bedroom and bathroom has been showing up more frequently than we are used to will it appear here will that part of the map be a focal point for either dark zero on their defenses or their attacks when they go there or m80 for their first six attacks we will watch Quite keenly, actually, to see if it occurs. That part of the map is below the bomb site that we're going to start off on, which is the office bomb site on the top floor. M80 will begin by clearing over T and Karaoke, where DZ has established a fair bit of a defense. They've got some reinforcements, they've got some mute jammers, and they've got a setup that will require M80 to respond. I think this is very much like a counterpay to Darkseer watching M80 playing Skyscraper previously because that 5x sped up clip that JC broke down, this is the same thing. 1 minute 30 seconds, they just get into the building, Noodle finds a pick onto Nave, that's a great start for the attack, but it's very slow. Spot walks in, summon the wall, guess what? Mute jammer. So half the round burnt, they just walked in the door, Somehow the second summit goes off, they impede it, there we go. So now we have a player more from DC stuck in a corner. Emedi could build a two-man lead here. Spoit oh. walks in and beheads Panbazoo. They look like they want some more, but Canadian has managed to evade them inside of tea room flashed out. He's gonna just be eating flashes like it's his day job. Another one will come in from Cameraman now as NJR has died, DZ. Just hoping that Canadian can keep numbers close. Not to be the case. It's all up to Bolo in a 1v3. He's got that ACOG. He's got a mirror window. This is your real last line of defense to stop them from coming towards the other side of the map, but the backside of Bolo gets droned out over by Bomb Chassis. Great mechanical skill from Bolo. But additional skill is there to be had from oh. an Bolo, I don't know if that was a fat finger or what the what the exact plan man was there, but he somehow manages to take an awful lot of damage. Hold on. Holding court in this position, pulling out the sidearm after dropping Noodle. 
spam pings coming in. Could very easily turn this, oh. but Kino pinches in with cameraman distracting Bolo the other way around. M80 started off strong, and they end strong despite the best efforts from Bolo. I like that from M80. Not sure it was like a conscious decision or just like what happened because they were droning, but I truly believe one of the strongest things you can do in like a three versus one is let that sing single player just kind of sit there and sweat. Because Bolo got that first pick, he's feeling it, it's now 1v3, he's swinging, he's going for pre-fires, he's got that adrenaline fired up. M80, they pull the plug for 20 seconds. They hold angles, they start droning, they get the intel, they walk up, they, they smoke grenade, then they push together. And you saw Bola in the beginning of that 1v3 versus the ending, a little bit slower. That adrenaline slowly leaving that body. So I like that it's kind of like sweating him out or bleeding him out, making him kind of relax again, and then going for the play together. DC had intel to work with, but it's a 1v3. They're coming from all directions. That's just not a super winnable position. That early round though, M80 took a very long time to get into the building. And when you're playing Skyscraper, it's hard to get in the building. It's hard to clear the middle of the building. And it's also hard to clear the bomb side. It's why the best Skyscraper teams in the world either will go for a side rush because then time is not an issue, or you need to have a constant amount of progression through the map. That means not getting stuck at one point for half the round. Because if a defending team doesn't just surrender kills some way, like for example, peak in last round from DC, trying to cover each other, you don't have enough time to walk all the way through the bomb side. Time just runs out. So M80, while they win that first round, they do need to speed things up a little bit more, shows a bit more confidence, but look at this lineup. Sense, Deimos, Glass, Osa, this speaks confidence, this speaks fun siege, and I'm just waiting right now, watching the player positions, they're clearly trying to set up exactly what the execute is going to be. And right now, it's all from outside the building. Opening windows, applying some pressure, droning out, getting that intel to figure out where that execute will happen later on. I wouldn't be very happy playing against this M80 lineup, that's for sure. No, no. Unless you're Nafe, another warden. And as you can see. Brought the tools to counter it, but... Again, how you go about dealing with these operators, especially the Deimos, who we have seen some really good looks on. Just as we see a good look Whoa. of a grenade bounced around and NJR swings on the cameraman who decides that backstairs was the part of the map that he wanted to hold. Um. Noodle amidst the smoke, getting Diffuser down, but there's Nate, Nitrocell in hand, shooting through the wall as Kino to eliminate Bolo. He had the marks. He saw the yellow suit of armor. And now, swing on to Nave, but a miss. Easy standing pat for the moment. Half of the round has gone by. Citizen trying his best to track down these members of DZ. He found Panbazoo and now through the wow. floor will take out Nave. Relatively easy finish for him. Fuser obviously surrendered earlier when Noodle died to that Nitro self. With the remaining two players of M80, your task is to either kill the last three from DZ or retrieve the Diffuser, which seems unlikely at this point. Easy have established crosses so that if you try to push towards that diffuser, you'll be finished off. NJR being washed. Ice point. Down he goes. <laughs> Citizen scrambling from below. He's got the read, but very limited time, Nick. This should be a relatively easy Dark Zero round. It should. I mean, Demos is in at one update at a time, but when you see the opponent, that opponent also sees you, but a bit delayed. So if you scan somebody and hunt them here from Citizen, DC will communicate where exactly Citizen is going to be playing at and try and shut it down. They got a triple crossfire right now, waiting for Citizen to make the first move and completely locking him out. And DZ's a disciplined team. Both of them are, but they know exactly where this last player from M80 is going to come. They're not even <laughs> bothering to engage. Look at this. Citizen walking and making uh, a ton of noise now over by Golden T. Might get the swing around, but NJR flicks at the last second and DZ prevails. Cameraman was the one who was supposed to make some noise and keep things going for this M80 team. After he walked in towards the bomb site, couldn't get it done. He gets picked off really early on. That's utility lost. That's the inability for the defenders to see removed. You now of a much clearer line of sight to where that diffuser is going to go down. And then, of course, you've got the warden to see through all of it, irrespective of what comes your way. And DZ, read into that. Shut them down. The diffuse plan is a huge gamble. Does not work off. Does not work out. And just like that, M80 find themselves in a bad spot and are not able to recover as DZ plays the waiting game and shuts them down in the final remaining two engagements.
You can see in that last round that it made it there is still like a, a new squad. There's like some very small kind of details that were missed. Cameraman on the sense went for the execute to like throw out that roly poly before his teammate came up the back staircase to hold the door. So, cameraman dies with the gadget in the hand. That's how they lose that opening duel. Then they go for the plan. C4 from Geisha gets shut down. Like, it was a very simple kind of execute that one single C4 could completely destroy. And that's what happened. But I like it. It was a good attempt. And if DC were roaming with a bigger presence around, like, off the bomb side, it also might have worked. But third round now, Nave looking for a cheeky spawn peak. Mind you, again, there is a tr the trajectory lineup that you see in casual and rank is also in pro play. So Nave can see exactly like if that C4 is going to make it or not. He jumps out, tosses it. It doesn't land on any of the players, so no real value being gained. But it does make the opponents of, of Mehdi kind of stay on their toes. Okay, DC are going for spawn peaks. They're playing this kind of front forward aggression early on. We need to be careful. Take those extra 5-10 seconds to pre-aim the windows, pre-aim the doors, not just like sprint up towards the building. Because the worst way to start a round on attack is a player gets bomb peaked. And if you look at the attacker lineup right now, no matter who you kill, if you're Dark Zero, you're happy. Either you kill the IQ, so let's, you know, counter intel, you kill Soft Destruction Sophia, or you kill any of the power operators or hot breachers. So any single kill from DC side will heavily sway the favor, or for, uh, rather, will heavily favor them this round. This offside flank and slash lurk roll has been favored by Canadian for quite some time, and I honestly cannot say that I'm the biggest fan of it, but if DZ thinks it's working, or if Troy thinks it's working in particular, Troy is a multi-time world champion. I think he knows yeah. a little bit better than me. I sit here in the cheap seats. Well, actually, that's not true. I, I don't know if sponsor obligations allow me to say the chair I'm sitting in, but this was certainly not a cheap seat. Same with yours. <laughs> it, was a, it was a turn of phrase. Canadian decides to tussle with Kino onto that geisha window. There's nothing cheap about that. I think you could say is maybe Kino getting a relative freebie, losing half of his HP, and Geisha has now been consumed by M80 as DZ fall off. We don't need to waste a lot of time because whether it's just due to M80 droning on other parts of the map or Canadian being a thorn in their side, there's only a minute remaining for the attackers to get in. Oh, yeah. And not just that, but it may have two drones left. And, you know, there are two flanks typically open on the attack. There are two staircases, for example. Either you'll have the flanks open, which means DC can go for a flank for free, or they cannot drone the entries. And that's why we see Citizen check every single corner on that window, because you don't know what's actually clear. They're going to go in completely blind into the bomb side attack, and they have Grim, thankfully. That can give them intel. But there it is, the swing from Bolo, so I'm down to a 4v4. An MP7, it stings. Oh boy, does it ever. And Bolo will now be in the midst of the smoke. Watch towards the opening as the fire will rain in front of his very eyes. This is a very heavy split push at the moment from M80. For a second there, like cameraman was gonna get the read on Bolo. Kino suffering some damage as he walks on through Ouch. Bolo, still in this position. It's a powerful one. You'd think that Bolo's the only player left with what's going on with DZ as M80 decides to feed themselves one by one by one, but the cavalry shows up at the right time. DZ out muscle the M80 push. That round is just solely decided by Bolo playing the corner. He gets a kill by the swing, gets a kill in the vertical. It's just really good siege from him, and it's also a discipline from Darkseer. They recognize they don't really got to move a whole lot here. They got bombsite, they got strong positions, and they do have the crossfires if they need it. The moment Bolo died, we saw NGR swing out, get the trade, and then there's just a complete lockdown from Dark Zero. And time really is a problem from M80. They don't have enough time to probably figure out what the approach is going to be. We saw a cameraman outside the building trying to maverick the wall with like 20 seconds left. And he's outside the building. Like, he has to rotate to get in just to assist his teammates. And the wall didn't even get opened in, in the end, so they don't get that breach pressure either. So Emedi comes down again just to speed. The Dokubi ban makes it more difficult. The Monty ban also makes this more difficult. But this is also Skyscraper. Going 2-4 on the attack in half is not the end of the world. I would argue if you're a matey, you're probably being kind of hopeful for a 3-3 half at best. And if you go 2-4, it's like, okay, we didn't get the 3-3, but I mean, we got the second best option. We got 2-4 half. So they got their first round in the back. That's very important to note here. But they're still fishing for at least one more. Last round, they tried those power operators. They played 
the, the Grim and they played the Capital, but again, as I said earlier, they didn't have enough time or information to work those gadgets properly to get a full bomb set execute. So, what can you do better? Well, I think the Ying here will help them, because Ying, while it's great for the bomb set attack, you can also clear out the roamers. There's a roamer in the corner, flashbang them pushing, and get the kill. Easy peasy. They're playing Twitch, they're getting more information in the front, they can also deny some of those gadget trees, uh, gadgets. And then you have Nomad that can lock down the flanks, which enables you to send more drones into the front to help the roam clear. So I like the adaptation here from M80, but it comes down again to execution. Execution, like how Canadian was executed. <laughs> Ooh, Geisha. Not that kind. Not if you're a DC fan. Maybe not that kind. You know, I'd really love to ask Citizen why he runs Ammunition's Charm on every single gun. Maybe he's a fan. Have you thought about that? I'm a fan of Ann, but I don't run her Charm on every gun. Pam oh, is What the second last bullet? Mag dumps into Citizen. That's first pick. Is DZ hold down below? The other side of the map, though. The question that was asked before round one even started was whether DZ would defend that bedroom bathroom bomb site. Not so far. Three rounds and DZ has gone through the same standard rotation that we see time and time again. Maybe not time and time again, not if that part of the map is being used more often. Now Noodle looking for a kill on back stairs, oh. but he's read into it by NJR. Both of them knew that a fight was coming. NJR on five and one so far through three active rounds, four active rounds, even though it hasn't finished yet. Seems like everybody wants to get in on the fun here. One call, one kill from Pambazoo, one from Bolo, one from NJR. Cameraman find himself in Geisha, but empty handed as he can't get through that castle barricade. The only way out is to melee it. There's Bolo picked off by Spoif. Is M80 are making quick work now that they've gotten into the building upstairs, but We'll find a bit of a troubling situation. Down goes Cameraman. Oh. Spoit will follow. NJR and Pambazoo, the last two kills, and DZ answer back. So, looking at these rounds and the little, little information I know about M80, so Cameraman is supposed to be the one calling, as far as I understand, and that was a big talking point for the team and the players. Like, he's still getting used to, like, speaking English and, like, learning to call because it's very different. And it's been a big learning process, and I want to see like what they have to say about that because we do have a tactical timeout from M80. So, can we pick their brains on what they think is going wrong? Got a little lesson in here. Like the guy Geisha, guys already know. But if they were forced move, because they did the other lineup, if they were forced move, if you could do the same attack. Fuck it, if they were forced move, base. Can you check that? If they yeah, do, okay. do the same thing, and if you see uh, one below, check, track the the warden, okay? Mm -hmm. Track the warden. And on exhibition, guys. It's fine. I think we do the same thing. I think he, uh, Willy can play with Deimos. So if like Mercenario can kill the guy Geisha from below. And bro, let's do towards the Dragon, bro. Terrace is move. Dragon. Let's do Dragon. Yeah. Terrace, move. Yeah. Terrace move. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yes, I was curious what they thought the problems were there, and, and I, I was gonna make my own note and say, Cameraman is often playing these operators in a very kind of back-end position. Maverick outside the building, Ying that last round outside the building, and then like on the rush round with the, with the sense and stuff, he died early. It's like when your leader is not getting the full overview in the rounds and playing very far back, it can be very difficult to actually progress. Because if the entries want to go in one direction and Cameron's doing his own thing on the other side of the building, you cannot really make the strategical call for the team as to what to do next. So the time out there being spent strategically, what the win conditions were going to be, it was like find the warden, hunt the warden, for example, and be careful of the staircases. So try and look out for that in this upcoming round. You, Parter, spoke about how master bedroom bombsite, right? And it's not a bombsite that we see all that much in North America or in Europe. But in Brazil, which you and I also happen to cast together, we do see this bombs play, being played a lot more than other regions. DC right now, not quote unquote innovating because it's been done before, but they're actually happily playing the side here on round number five. It's a good round to do it after a tactical timeout from Amity because they might not be expecting this bomb site. So kind of changing things up here, throwing that prep work possibly into the gutter. One thing that I don't want the listen-ins to take away from is the, I guess, knowledge that the other team speaks as well. Dark Zero yes. gets to use that same time to talk to their coach Mint and go through how they want to best approach, not just this round, but potentially subsequent rounds. 
So if DZ has those 45 seconds to also strategize, why not throw a wrench in the plan of whatever you think M80 might be going over? Now, I mean, I will say a lot of what M80 can talk about, and as we heard, doesn't need to be site-specific here. DZ could have very obviously spent that entire time talking about <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> Bolo's cursor there. Nothing more than this bomb set in particular. And hey, what a start it is for Dark Zero. A minute off the clock. You know, a noodle off the board. Oh boy. Chaos in the server, yeah? <laughs> I mean, what do you make of this? Some 80, technical timeout. They talk about what to fix. They hunt down the warden, sure, but what does it cost you? Probably a little bit too much in this round. Very quick now for Spoit to get in through the rotate. Cameraman dies. Dark Zero had lost NJR and they trade back. Spoit has found himself inside the bomb site. The ash with diffuser, that's an abnormality. Citizen watching quite intently. Where is DZ going to come from? Is Canadian on the gadget to see that this home oh, hold on. is now being diffused by none other than M80, who get a pick and then head out of the building. There might only be two of them, but Spoit and Citizen can do some serious damage to the best of the teams. Spoit's in a strong spot, too. Those kill holes that Dark Zero are looking down through do not provide a proper vantage point on the Spoit. So instead, they have to take the engagement directly, and they'll do just that, DZ. The last remaining players all coalescing around that part of the map, gunning him down their citizen to the rescue, but the flank from Nath will shut it down. The two Brits engaging in a 1v1, but it's Dark Zero's Brit to come out ahead. You know, watching those player cams, it almost looked like M80 were happier about losing that round than DC were about winning it. It really is like a... Uh... We're here to play, boys, when it's Dark Zero and the job is not done yet. They might be winning the rounds, they might be up with a significant score lead 4-1, to one, but it really, for them, is, you know, they know how close this can get, right? DC is an orc historically, they love to go over time, they love to make it close and exciting, and they know that you can never really count this out because, again, this is Skyscraper defense. While DC are playing a really good round of Rainbow Six Siege, this is also maybe being really sloppy on the attack, and I think someone like Troy, he recognizes this. He would be the type of guy to say, guys, we didn't win this round, they simply lost it. Because MED are not putting up a significant fight in these rounds, it's usually pretty one-sided favor in Dark Zero. The only time DC they fall that single around is when they give up a bunch of opening kills early on, they've not made that mistake since. It's very clear to me that Dark Zero go, okay, and maybe they're slow, they're struggling, they're not getting inside the building, so those don't give them anything for free. We only see Dark Zero make those kind of peaks and aggressive moves when they have to. And it's really well recognized by the team. You know, DC did have a couple of like early struggles this stage. They were hot during SI, surprising, I think, everybody with their performance, looking like a really strong team. They go to stage one, you know, a few weeks later, and they look like a kind of different team. They don't play as well, they don't play as confident, and it just outright didn't look like they were as good or well prepared, perhaps. That's maybe the land magic, who knows? But so far, it has been a really good look from them. Emedi on their final round in the first half, looking for that again, 2-4 side. That is what they're aiming for, most likely. But there's a possibility of that slight upset where DC takes a fifth. This has been a very, very good start for Dark Zero, who haven't really been the team that I think we expected after the six invitational, right? You brought yeah. in Naif, you brought in Bolo, you have a great finish there at the event itself. You know, make main stage. Yeah. Finish in that fifth to sixth place in the top six, you could say, but not much better than sixth. And well, it's been a an odd run for them. One overtime win, one overtime loss, one regulation oh. lost, and a minus five round differential. Easy have struggled to close things out without going to overtime. I mean, closing out the match in a positive direction has been the bigger struggle for Dark Zero, but a 4-1 scoreline on defense on Skyscraper is pretty good. We'll see if they can hang on to it when they switch sides. Yep, we see again timer halfway point. Troy was stuck in terrace for a bit, but just falls back off that angle, I imagine. This is technically the quickest round for Mady to roam clear. It's still not quick, but it's the quickest. Halfway through the round, but Pembasu has not been killed just yet. Bolo goes down first, but the roaming presence is still there. Pembe gets the right timing, could get a massive flank onto a Mady. Kino holding on to that diffuser, floating alone over by Ooh. Drum. He's got backup, know. but not within striking distance. 
Easy licking their chops at one player from M80. Oh. Deciding to go on their own. Spoit's been downed. Kino to the rescue. Dark Zero, though, have yet to secure a kill as Spoit is brought back from near death. That Maestro Cam getting good value, looking long range. As DZ can continue to rotate, continue to work around. 40 seconds left. They've got some spam pings, but they cannot relinquish control of the bomb site or else bad will become worse. Surprise, Pamela didn't go for the flank. He's instead back to the bomb side. They're planting. Can you see for below? That's the win condition goes out. But they relocate. Now immediately they're looking very strong in this position because now they can plant. There's no C4 below. Absolutely zero chance that Pambazoo gets on in. Spoit, his third kill so far this round. As the chunky monkey of NJR's Maestro gets up top. No ace to be had for Spoit. He's too busy getting the diffuser down as Noodle gets one. Spoit a 4K and M80. Send to the first raft. Send the first half into the books. A 4-2 half, though, for DZ. But as you said, 4-2 is what you're going to be playing for. And a lot of times with the way that we see these maps played, winning two rounds on attack is all you really need. That's managing expectations. And if that's the case, expectations managed well on the side of M80. Well, you're right. Um, from this side, though, looking at that previous round... Sorry, I was so thrown off by the Citizen and Noodle player camps. They're so funny to me. They're so... <laughs> I can't focus. Um, I had a point I was gonna make. And then Citizen just completely destroyed it. Thinking... Oh yeah, last round. I'm curious what actually happened with the with the opening kills. Spoy just got a 3k as you mentioned. And I'm curious if Dark Seer were the ones to swing and make a mistake. Or if it was M80 making a proactive play with Spoy being a kind of, you know, key player to do it because when we saw that third kill go out we spit at a spoiled he was inside mini bar basically on the bomb side that either means that it made a huge play successfully or dark zero they kind of had a big screw up and when you have pambasu in that flankable position early on and then lose players on site that's likely what prompted pambasu to give up the flank and instead go play safely on the side with his teammates but then it falls apart Whereas if you have that strong bomb side, Pamela can go for a risky flank. Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, who knows? But it's those small things that are quite important to look out, to look out for. Side swap though, DC, they bring a very similar lineup to that of M80, the Nomad, the verticality of Buck, and of course the Grimace, that power tool with double heart breach in case either NGR or Pamela falls. This means both players can play a bit more aggressive and play a little bit more loose with their life on these operators, as there's always a backup second hot breacher, and they can apply pressure on both sides. Panda, for example, getting the main side, MGR hovering on the Geisha side as well, trying to breach on both ends at the same time. Spoid hears the skeleton key. There's a drone not far removed that will continue to antagonize him, harass him from that spot. Oh, he's got two goo mines in back pocket. He can litter the way back to the bomb site with some pain and misfortune for the attackers. Three drones all used at him, and yet Spoit is handling all of them. Cannot fly mm. blind in this position. That might be a bit of sloppiness from Bolo. Oh. And Spoit is just shredding DZ. Canadian to the rescue, but the damage has already been done at this point. Ambazoo and Bolo down for the count. A terrible start from Dark Zero on their first attack. It is, and you see right here, they rotate from M80. This thing, we got two picks. We got one to get all the way back to bomb side. Play that at four versus three. The thing about Skyscraper that's very unique to other maps is, is, is it's hard to roam clear, and it's hard to take the bomb side. There's no easy stage off the round favoring the attack. It just sucks all the way through. And it's why when you see defenders get this kind of big lead, they will just fall back. They, because the side is so strong, you don't have to run the roam, the flank, the sea force below. You can literally just sit up in four separate corners with a decent amount of crossfire and just wait for DC to walk in through one of two doorways or one of two staircases. It's a negative outcome heavily on Dark Zero side here. And they got a problem to solve. They have no beats on Grim. All they have are five flashbangs and this final air jet from Nave. And again, two doors into side. Dino's just waiting so patiently. Nitro Cell ready as well. As Noodle lurks down below. If Canadian wants to get that diffuser off, Noodle will be waiting patiently for that. If you can gain any information, DZ now moving their forces ever closer to the bomb site, but NJR has another idea. Somebody needs to pressure cameraman and Kino. 
easy, putting NJR in that position. Down they all go. Boy, that was okay. Well, that one was over in a hurry. M80. So cool, so poised. This boy's picture has been frozen now for about three rounds. Looks very <laughs> disinterested in the matchup that's going on. <laughs> He's not making it back. Right? There, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> we won, guys. Oh. Can, we just, can, we, can we just go back? I know. One more time. Just one more time, please. <laughs> Good job, everybody. He's lost in thought. He's like, what, what happened that round? I, I, I think I got like, what, two kills? Just like swing the breach and then like, we just kind of won, right guys? That's what happened? I think, I don't know. He's caffeinated, he's feeling good. Seeking those engagements, seeking the swings. And honestly, uh, yeah. I think uh, if you're M80, you're very happy with how that round played out. And if you're Dark Zero, you're starting to feel the annoyance of attack skyscraper. So adaptation game. We gotta look at the operator lineup here for DC. What are they thinking? IQ, Glass, Brava, Thermite. Not all that much changes in terms of like how this one will play out. It's the same kind of operators, you know? Anti-destruction, soft destruction, and then one single power operator. Last time it was Scrim, this time it's Capital. In the previous round though, the way M80 played the four versus two was very smart. They had two players below, one Solus who can figure out where the plan is going down, and the other one with a C4 in pocket. And it forced DC to attack on two different floors, horizontally and vertically, with only three players. So they're gonna be super spread apart. M80 did not look like the strongest team on the attacking side, but that, you know, defense at first round already now has shown us that there's a bit more depth to this roster than what their attack showed us. We've been seeing a fair bit of Brava so far in this matchup. And again, Brava oftentimes a reactive operator. You have a lot of gadgets there from the defenders? Well, bring a Brava. I'll trickster op will be able to steal things away from you. Down oh. goes Spoit, Pan Bazoo, successful on the entry. Entry kills so far. Obviously a big part of this matchup is now Cameraman. Side of reception does some serious work to try to get rid of Pan Bazoo off that position. No damage though done. Ambazoo suffering oh. earlier on. Cameraman taking some damage too. Both very similar in HP. It's a good start. And again, getting the kills also buys you time. Now DC can go a bit slower and just solidify their position and not lose that early advantage. So, the position right now. Drone, Brava, right now, Nave getting active. Try and hack those default cameras. Look for utility and communicate where those players are. DC can take the next 20, 30 seconds or so before wanting to hit the bombs at itself. Just as we did in our very first matchup, we've got a live listen-in ready for you, and we'll get to hear how Dark Zero plans their execute for the final minute of this round. Good one now, Rob. Not seeing not seen anything, no. no. Okay, I can delivery delivery is good, Rob. He's in spawn with me. Okay, let me open up Black Window here. So now I can just stack up with you. Okay, I'm ready. To I, only, I only have I ice tea. Are we ready? I'm, I'm ready to go. There's, there's a wub on us. There's a wub on us. Fox yeah, I have my black health. Cool. Team cake, barbecue, cake, cake, cake barbecue. Cross, cake cross. Team barbecue as well. Who is it? Who is it? I am down. Can we, cake, can we reset and pick? I'm walking on black here. For yeah. I'll, be, I'll be box with yeah, box we, we with I don't know if I can res. I'm 1 HP. I can open this wall, maybe. I need help so I can res. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. This guy's in barbecue. He's on the bomb barbecue, I think. He flash. On the bomb. Yep, on the bomb. On the bomb, dead. Nice. Can you flash and maybe cross on me? Cross was keg. Cross was keg. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, one cat, one cat, one cat. It's Solus. Above, above, above. Here, I'm gonna try to go above real quick. Picking down these skulls. Yeah. Both above, both above. You gotta turn off Lanchise and I gotta turn off. I can go for purple. In your long, in your long. I'm playing purple side. Okay. In my hall. Good, you gotta play life. Two. Blind. It's fine, you're gonna have time, you're gonna have time. Call if he goes black, that's it. 1v1. It's no one. He's a Vader. Not black. I'll see if he goes black. Looks like he's going down. Yeah, going down. You can whip all above as well if you need to. Bottom black. Go in fish side. Going back to barbecue door. In barbecue. No eyes now. Sure. Sure. What a shot from Noodle. And they had full intel on the side of Dark Zero. But as I said in map number one, and I'm going to say it every single time, just because you know where somebody is does not mean you're going to win that engagement. 
Excellent play by M80. With Noodle especially not having any information as to the down on NJR. So you throw the impact grenade. How do you recover? You know, you play it safe, right? And at that time, yeah. you very briefly, the Solus went on to scanner, saw that the diffuser was being planted, but didn't do anything about it because your greater fear is where that last and unaccounted for player in DZ that was last seen at backstairs was playing. Noodle played that about as perfect as you could. And for people who don't play at this level, you don't know how quickly it is for you to get swung and die. If you play this game just for fun or you play at lower ranks, you don't really know what hits you half the time you die at the higher ranks. And that was a great example of it. Noodle was barely on the screen for a nanosecond. And that was enough to get the final kill and propel M80 to a tie. Both of these teams now sitting four rounds apiece. One of the interesting things to listen to Dark Zero's communication has always been how disciplined they are when you look at how they play their player positions and how they play the game strategically, but also how disciplined they are in their communication. There's very little talking. While the caps of fire bolts were going out and the smoke grenades, no one was saying a word. Everyone understood the mission, and you can tell just from like our point of view, not being in the server with them, I feel like we had a very good idea of what DC was trying to do and where the enemy was based off of their callouts as well. I was actually surprised at how much Bolo was talking to, calling both the Execute there, saying that he was ready, asking for help with the pickup, and just kind of directing them around a little bit, whereas Troy wasn't as much and Nave wasn't as much. But that's probably given the player positions. It just shows the depth that Dark Zero has with this roster. They have multiple people that can call now with a more experienced veteran roster with both Nave and Bolo joining the squad. DC, they're quick in the building. Bolo on the Ash Acock, by the way. Damn, does it feel good. And they're looking for players. They're looking to get the early pick, just like in the previous round, because that is probably going to be the key to success here. Build early lead, hold on to it, attack the side in that man advantage. Bolo with the bad timing doesn't get the pick there, but he has the insight at least that one player rotated from that mayor window towards Drum instead. Now that Ash's pick rate is starting to climb yet again, whether it be just changes to the ACOGs and the scopes, as you mentioned, or because of how good Ash's utility can be, it's a good reminder that Ash's breaching rounds are capable of shattering mirror windows. And because of this, now Citizen will be playing blind behind that spot. Pambazoo, the first one to die. The first interaction involves Spoit. Spoit just needs to hold this position on Warden. That's it. Citizen far enough back, falling off of that mirror window as we talked about, swinging onto the Ash, but Bolo survives for the time being. Citizen re-engaging, leading Bolo right into the line of fire. Scrambling back. Where's the bomb site through Dragon? Easy paying dearly to gain control of this part of the map. And maybe they have one strat right now. Oh, damn, is it good. Get open and kill, fall back to bomb side, play favorable numbers, win the round. That's how all three defensive rounds so far have basically played out, and it looks to be the same way it goes here as well. They're back on side, they got the pick, Canadian and Ape both very low in HP. DC, they do have the fire and smoke from the capital, but again, they don't have the numbers to work with this. MA didn't have information, they had no drones. DC have seven drones left, but they're lagging guns. They're lagging actual people to send into battle right now on the bomb side. Nafe almost dies now as well. In fact, he is down, but there's a trade. It's 2v4, still favoring M80. Tuberau will be able to freeze you out of the objective, quite Ow. literally, as that's exactly what Noodle's objective is. NJR with one, but it'll twist and turn, and not just utility. It's the firepower from Tuberau that does so much damage. M80 takes the lead. They pick up their fifth round. You know, let this be a lesson. If you ever feel like you are losing it because you're down in round count, never count yourself out on Skyscraper. Defense is very strong. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, yeah. look, let's, let, let's be careful with the frustration, all right? Uh, we know fucking Skyscraper defense is hard, right? We can fucking win. Well, there's a lot of rounds that we can fucking win here. Um, if they go back to T, by the way, that was the exact close defense they used on us from Charlotte. They had nothing to protect, uh, yeah. to protect the mirrors if you did want to flip. If we still want to go house side over, I know we're lacking on info. I think we just need to sync up better on the drones. Like, we, we do have the drones on them. We just need to make sure, like, maybe we need a countdown. Three, two, one. Like, let's let's make sure that guy's stone is not going to just be stone. He's moving around cups. He's a trophy. Uh, cameraman's running around underneath the fucking mute. Um, yeah, let's just just be aware of that one. They're gonna fight us. They're not gonna back up because that setup sucks to back up on. Remember, we we played that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they just that setup sucks. <laughs> it's like that very simple. 
Um, for the side of Minder, the coach of Dark Zero, it did seem a little bit less clear to me on what the exact problems were. It was a, a part of like, let's like, calm down the frustration, let's sync up, and let's use those drones better, and then maybe this, maybe that. It wasn't a whole lot of like, this is the problem. And I think it, it, it's a fair thing because what is the problem for DC, right? There's a lot of things that are kind of slipping away, opening devs, you know, they don't get the right map control, maybe they don't have Intel to work with, etc. It just does kind of seem like they're losing these rounds, but there is no super clear definitive reason for that, at least not from my perspective. And also, if you are a coach, this is the hard part, you have to give information to your teammates that they can work with, but you cannot play the game for them. You cannot tell them how to play the game. You're not gonna go in there and say, Bolo do this, or Nave do that. Can you know, Canadian lead this way? It's like, they know what to do. They know what has to be done. But I think the big point there is just to take a, a, a timer, 45 seconds, relax, reset, go back into it. Yes, it's hard, but you gotta problem solve it. And right off the rip, we see DC with a kind of different approach in terms of operator lineup, right? They're bringing Deimos, they're bringing Osa. So now they can kind of isolate people a bit more. Let's say they find Noodle downstairs of Solus, Deimos track, get Bolo in there, pew pew, go for the gunfights, maybe try and find that pick. At least now they have the tools if they want to. It's interesting that he referenced that it was exactly what Lowe's did to them. And I mean, yeah, it, you, it requires the whole team to know specifically what that was, because if you heard, there was very little specifics beyond that. Oh. Now, one of the first things that Mint said was, let's watch our frustration. How frustrated are you if your knave getting ran out on by Noodle just seconds in? Now there could be yet another from Noodle. Oh my, no. how is he still alive? He'll have to swing and blind, he gets the kill on the Pambazoo, still being watched and still firing away. He's at over half HP. DZ barely putting a no. dent onto him. It's spoiled to get that pick with Noodle playing down below. DZ falling apart in front of our very eyes. I think DC made the effort to full send there because when they lost Nave and lost the demos, the whole like the entire strategy that they were building fell apart. And with that, they also get the round M80 with the first kill and the last. And it was Noodle to start it, and everyone came to try and help him, but he did not need any help. He got three kills in the round, and the people around him are falling instead. Now there's gotta be more frustration on the side of Dark Zero. That's your timeout. And now you have no parachute, you changed up your strategy, you got shut down again by Solis, and now what do you do? I use your timeout, it doesn't work. Things actually look worse for you there. Yeah, it did. I, I mean, worst obviously round. frustration Bye. does set in at some point, and players just look off, but outside of NJR, DZ have just look like they are being outmanned and outgunned. Bolo had a couple good looks, but I mean, 5 and 10 is the scoreline for Bolo. The most deaths on this team. But I mean, Bolo doesn't usually play sheltered minutes. He doesn't play a sheltered role. If there's anybody on this team that is bound to die in a round, it is probably going to be Bolo. It might be Pambazoo. Again, it really depends on how DZ goes about attacking this bomb site. And now... Downstairs, M80 will defend Kitchen and Barbecue, but a heavy extension up top as we come to expect. EZ, we're up 4-2. It's been four unanswered rounds from M80 to catapult them into a very, very good spot. And this game is incredibly winnable for M80. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's been, uh, it's been five rounds straight. It was the last attack around in the first four defense, so... If you're DC, it's like a solid, what, 25, 30 minutes ago since you won a round. Essentially, it's been a, it's been a hot second. It's not been now, quick, Nick. It's not been quick. That's, I think that's no. what you're trying to say here. <laughs> no, it, it, it's been, you know, it, most of these rounds, besides the last one, they go down to like the sub 10, sub 20 seconds. It really has been some long stretched out rounds where DC early are playing from behind and just slowly bleeding out, essentially. That has been their biggest issue. That first opening duel, they rarely win it, and they basically never get it for free. It always costs them a lot of time, a bunch of drones, or they get traded, essentially. So, M80, 
They played very aggressive last round. Look what they're doing now. They're playing Tuberau, Kaid, Mira, or Maya Warden. And oh. again, DC with similar struggles. They lo lose the opening duel. Wall doesn't get opened up correctly. And you don't have another hop region to back this up. This is really terrible if you're DC. I can only imagine the frustration of our good friend Fresh as he watches this game. Would have just hit midnight. I, I mean, Europe's daylight savings time is a little different. Midnight, yeah. But it's very close to midnight there for him. As that is a, a tremendous blunder. Cameraman dies down below. Two barrow. Two barrow. Newest operator. Well, second newest operator. I guess now technically Deimos is. Yes, he is. Things, things flying by. No ability to freeze that gadgetry, slow down the attackers. And I mean, DZ have been a slow team, but Ambazoo has something to say about that. Canadian taking damage. He sprints on in. The B-bomb site seems to be all his. But oh. Ambazoo dies from an angle he wasn't expecting. Citizen falters as well, but DZ managed to pull off a successful defuse plant. Spoint, keeping a numbers advantage for his team. Now it's a 2v3 with Bolo and Naif, the two newest additions, as the last two to save this matchup. M80 want all three of these points. Spoit getting shut down by Nafe inside a bathroom. You know, on the diffuser, they're counter disabling it. He needs to stop him, picked apart. It's all up to Nafe now with time still favoring M80. Noodle will hop on it. Nafe has to get in. Noodle at the halfway point, off he goes! Oh, no! no way, Noodle clutches out and it is time to get it done. A heroic individual effort. And Noodle will be the star of the show. M80 stun DZ. He had about a second left. He hits the wall bang, 180 flake to like win it. Gets back in the future like eight point something seconds. Heartbreaking loss of a round there for DC because Nate has such a strong position at post plan. But that round's not the problem if you're Dark Zero. It's all the rounds before that one. It made an attack, they fell a little bit flat, but on defense, they showed us so many different styles of Siege, and it's also why they won this matchup. DZ did not enter the day in the basement of the North America League, but the results of the very first match have now put them there. And boy, oh boy, they don't get a single point against M80. They were up 4-2. But when you ride the better side of Skyscraper, it's a lot harder to regain your footing when you tumble in that second half. M80 got the favorable side of Skyscraper, and they showed exactly why it is such a strong map for the defenders. M80 doesn't drop a single round when they move to defense. And that is obviously not an ideal spot for any of their opponents to be in, let alone Dark Zero, who still search for their first win in regulation. DZ suffer their second loss in regulation. One loss as well in overtime and a victory in OT means they're in the bottom three of the North America League. And that is quite the result. It is. It's very unexpected to be honest. And also, M80 won six rounds straight, by the way. And you know, when DC calls a timeout, the first thing the coach of Mint says, let's watch our frustration, right? There's a very clear sign that DC, they are struggling. They know they're not doing great. They gotta fix it for the, you know, play days to come. And obviously, there's work to be done. It doesn't get any easier. We still got plenty of matches to go though. We'll be right back. I'm not gonna lie, this might be the first time we've ever had to rely on caffeine science to determine who was gonna win this game. M80 go to Skyscraper for the second straight game. They take Dark Zero to it this time instead of Club, and they get the victory that they couldn't get against Luminosity. Jesse, are you are you drinking out of the Spoit cup now? I am, Jacob, and I don't think I've got the same special sauce that Spoit had, but uh, I've got the next best thing, Bolo Fan Tears. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. We didn't even highlight the fact that it was a Bolo versus Spoit game. We went the cameraman versus Canadian route, and I think we probably should have gone the Spoit route, because uh, that game was crazy. It was a nuts one. I mean, uh, honestly, the, the attacks were still somewhat slow in my mind. I don't know if they had no, the same they, boost. Not in your mind. Some they, things they were, were slow. Yeah. They, they were, were a little slow. bit slow. But the defenses were good enough. They clutched up on a couple big rounds. And M80, they were the better team today. It reminded me similar to SI how teams were starting out. Defenses were absolutely amazing. Attacks were horrible. But the teams that could just find two or one win on attack would immediately convert that over into defense and then win out entirely. And M80 won six rounds in a row.
Yeah. None of those attack rounds for Dark Zero went their way at all. They tried, nothing ended up working. There were a couple post plan opportunities, but even then it was still no dice. But it goes into the aggression that I was talking about that M80 was meeting DZ with on those attacks when that side swap. M80 was not letting up. They were fighting yep. DZ at every point possible. And this is a team that one knows how DZ plays, but this is also what I talked about in the early games. A lot of these teams are understanding how they need to counterplay against DZ and are meeting them at the forefront. 100%. And when we got to that second half, when M80 moved to defense, I believe they got every single opening pick bar one. And usually when they're getting to these opening picks, like right here from Spoit, they're not just getting one. You jumped off they're seat. staying they're... alive. They're finding multi-kills over and over again. Then they're getting out and going back to the bomb site. It was incredibly impressive how Spoit was doing that consistently. Noodle was doing it really well as well. Noodle probably the MVP of this game. I really do think that M80 turning it up on that second half uh, was massive. And fighting them in that early round, as you said, Gabe, was the most important part. But trying to fight against that, if you're Dark Zero, how do you predict when Citizen is just going to run around the map with a vector trying to find kills, when he hides behind a window, when he ducks back around at, like a, a door frame in some way? That's just not something that DZ, knowing how they play, can effectively counter very well. The biggest thing is just you sometimes just got to break away or allow someone to maybe do something a little different, come at a different entry point, or just work the map a little differently than what you might have down in the strat book, which is not to say that DZ doesn't do it, but they clearly aren't doing it as effectively that other teams are doing that. But there is a guy who we need to highlight because we talked about him earlier in the day, not having a great stage thus far, but Noodle was a post-plant god in this matchup on two specific occasions, but it just looked like from a statistical perspective from what he was doing in the server and his vibes on his camera, everything for Noodle was going great. Yeah, and I mean, Gabe, you even mentioned it before the segment, or before the match started, Noodle hasn't really been having the biggest impact. His KD has been relatively poor coming through from M80, so for him to come through and have two back-to-back post-plant 1vx clutches is ridiculous for him. In the early game, he was playing really well when he needed to as well. Round number 10, stepping up there, as we can see, playing fantastic inside a kitchen, working with his teammates, working with some boy down to that bottom floor. And it's the aggression that I'm talking about right there. I mean, look at all three of them collapsing in on mm -hmm. DZ here mm -hmm. and stopping out the front, and now it's a 4v1. I mean, yeah, Ooh. Noodle just getting another clutch to win the game this time. I mean, again, these two, him, Noodle, and Citizen, if they can just find the tempo and continue on this trend, again, this is the M80 that I can see going to international that they're going to have far more success than the original roster had. You might got to ban that Solus against M80, man. The way that both he and the rest of the players were able to use that operator, just ridiculous. M80 at this point doing a good job to jump up the standings. It's not just Dark Zero, it's three points against Dark Zero. So at this stage, DZ, because of the Los victory, have now fallen below Los in the standings. And that is a really bad position for them to be. They have another game they have to play later today, and they're gonna have to react to this loss and then immediately shift gears later. And then what I was going, it can be a double-edged sword. You can start out the first game, not very strong, but that does now make you have to focus and prioritize all the mistakes that you made, or you carry that into the next game and then you fall flat on your face once again so eh, it's not great but it's great <laughs> for m80 certainly and I, I think you know at the start of the stage we we're kind of talking about for dark zero it's okay they've lost a couple of these opening games because at the end of the day all you got to do is make top six then you go to playoffs and all that matters is how you play in playoffs but as you said with Los jumping ahead of them we're starting to get to the point where like you're running out of these BO1s. You need to start finding wins if you're Dark Zero or else they're not going to make it to playoffs. Well, Los, Ma sorry, Los, wow. M80 got a big three points on the day. Los did too, but specifically for M80, let's get Spoit on the line and talk about this matchup. Dude, I just want to clarify real quick. You had Skyscraper against LG and it didn't go your way. And then you went to Skyscraper in this very particular case against DZ and it worked way better. Talk to me about why repeating the same map over again was the play here. Um. I mean, I, to be honest, uh, last time I played Sky, there was a lot of uh, nerves uh, going on and stuff like that. Uh, our attacks were pretty bad as well. And uh, I mean, we just knew that our Sky was better. Um, and, you know, we fixed the mistakes today and it looked better. Uh, I wouldn't say this is like the final piece that we have, but it looked better today at least, so I'm happy. Yeah, Spoy, I wanted to touch on something uh, that we talked about the, the pregame. Um, it feels like the pacing for M80 has largely been good, but the last game on Skyscraper and sometimes some rounds in this game on Skyscraper as well, felt like the pacing was a little bit slow. Is that something that you guys are focused on? Is that something you guys are worried about? Or were there other issues that you kind of wanted to focus on compared to the last Skyscraper to this one? I mean, there's a lot of like factors going into it. So first of all, it is a game day. We're a new team. There's a lot of nerves. You know, you don't want to do the, the wrong mistake here and there. So obviously things are going to be taking a little bit longer than they, used to, uh, used, they should. Um, but, you know, with time, I feel like 
we're gonna do good stuff for this team and I'm just happy right now, so. Yeah, and Mike, oh. real, real quick, if I can do one more. The way you play on defense instead of office when you're extending over from tea room karaoke, that seems like a great spot for you. Consistently, you're popping off there. <laughs> what is it about that room that feels so good for you? I mean, it's just like the way I, I find the ones and I kind of like, I isolate the one once uh, right there. You know, I've always been an office team, and you know, I, used, I like to play there since day one uh -huh, when uh, uh -huh. this guy uh, was reworked. I love that that spot behind the table. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember actually playing against my teammate Citizen, got an ace there in playoffs last year. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that, that's my place right there. <laughs> I don't know. You had Jesse jumping for joy when you were swinging that balcony, killing those wow, two wow. guys. He jumped off the couch. It was yeah, cool. literally. Yeah. He's like, he's getting the third. But then he didn't get the third, so he let it down a little bit. <laughs> but I guess my big question to you, so obviously the LG game didn't go the game that you guys wanted to. You guys, at least in my opinion, especially on the defenses, you guys looked far more confident in how you wanted to address DZ. Um, I mean, we, just, we basically knew the stuff that they would do. I mean, we had the, we've been bot reviewing and, you know, watching how they, you know, play the game and stuff. So it was just about making sure we have our own stuff uh, sorted to make sure we are playing the, the right contacts, we're running the, the right strats, even though I think I, I think me and Kino at one bomb said we were running the wrong strat completely. So I don't know how we won that <laughs> round, but, you know, we made it happen. Uh, just have to whip out the little FPL style there. For sure. But yeah. Just focus on yourself and then... I got I got one question, yeah. just because obviously you've been now the longest on the roster with Kino. How is it having Cameraman as the IGL with someone it's of just, that experience? Yeah, I mean, having Cameraman on the roster is, is great. He brings a lot of you know value and a lot of experience into the team. He knows what to do in certain situations. I mean, the guy has been... He's old. You can just say he's old. Yeah, he's old. If you don't have to say it, but come on. Uh, no, but with age, experience comes, guys. So, you For know. Sure. I'll get there one day, hopefully. Totally uh, true. Hey, I'll tell but, you right uh, now, your aim yeah. slows down, but your brain, it grows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last question for you, dude. Uh, Jesse did a very scientific statistical analysis earlier of what you were drinking going into that game against the Sonics. Can you confirm whether this cup is the same cup that you were drinking out of uh, from just last the last week? Jesse, can you show the camera again? We had a, we had a clip of you drinking from oh. a bit of a red cup. <laughs> just wondering yeah, maybe yeah. what was in that. You don't have to be too oh. specific. Yeah, it was actually water with ice because uh, oh, I was I out of oh. I respect. I'm so tired of these players drinking energy drinks. Like, Spoy <laughs> knows what he's doing. Well, I guess that's H2O. Makes the electrolytes, you know? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Fair play. That's all he really needs, yeah. dude. Again, uh, ice basically as cold as the ice in your veins. Spoy, again, congratulations on the dub. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, bro. Thank you. So, when oh, was one it? One more thing. What? Oh, oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait we didn't see it. We didn't see it. Oh. Get the sport charm, guys. Hey, yeah. all right. We yeah. love that. We love that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Congrats. I really like the idea of, yeah, one more thing, and he's gone. They, 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 they honestly should have just left it there. <laughs> should have just left it there. <laughs> well, that would have uh, been good. All right, that's a really, I mean, for M80, a slow, a slow DZ team, go back to Skyscraper two times in a row, prove that you can play Skyscraper over again. That's a pretty redemptive day overall for that team. Meanwhile, for DZ, you're in a really bad hole right now. Yeah, I mean, redemption's all around. I mean, M80 proving they can play Skyscraper, gave myself, finally starting to catch up in predictions a little bit. Yeah, what's the prediction percentage now? I don't, like, I don't really like, want to see it. I, I mean, yeah, I know it's It will be come. better. It will be better. I think you got back to 50%. I think you did. In any case, we're still looking for the redemption from Dark Zero, yeah. right? I mean, this has been a really rough start. I don't know the stats in front of me, but it feels like the worst start Dark Zero have had in many, many years. Uh, I don't know what the problems are, if they're just fumbling in these late rounds. Sometimes they're not getting those opening picks, which we touched on. Um, but they've got to get it sorted because this is not a pace that they can continue to maintain and expect to do well in the North American League. Well, the big problem is they open up the day with a really devastating loss. They're going to have to close the day and hope that it doesn't end the exact same way. They will play Luminosity in game number five, but Luminosity have their own first game to play in game number three. So we'll come to that after the break.